15 years later. Honey, I'm home. Honey. Kids. James. Riley. Answer me. Hello? Harold? Is that you? Yeah, it's me. Hey, listen, something came up at work and I was home later than usual today. That's okay, I'm just on my way to pick the kids up from school. The meatloaf is on the kitchen counter waiting to go into the oven. Just wrap it in tin foil and put it in, okay? Perfect. Okay, I gotta go. Bye. I appreciate you coming down here, Mrs. Porter. What's this about? Has James done something disruptive again? Hold on, I'll call in Mr. Hernandez. Louis, it's Principal Baxter. Could you please come down to my office? Thank you. Sorry to keep you waiting, Mrs. Porter. Mr. Hernandez and James will be down to my office soon. Come in. Ah, Louis. Thanks for coming. I hear your student James Porter is causing trouble in your class? He's a disruptive influence, and he openly mocks me in front of the class. Do you have any proof of what he's done this time? Well, um, no. Actually I don't. But I know he did something in class today. I know he put a thumbtack on my stool. I don't know, I don't know how he does it, but when I'm moving towards my chair, there's no tack. But the minute I'm sitting down, there's a tack. Coincidence? I think not. Don't worry, Lewis. I'll have a little talk with James and see if it's true. Ah, James. Take a seat. So? Is it true that you disrupted the class today by putting a tack on Mr. Hernandez's chair? He says I did. But I don't remember putting a tack there. Maybe the box of thumbtacks on Mr. Hernandez's desk fell off when he sat down and one landed on his chair. I was sitting at my desk when Mr. Hernandez was sitting down, so it couldn't have been me. Yes, but may I remind you that this is not the first time this year that you have disrupted Mr. Hernandez's class and been sent to my office. There was still the time you put salt in his coffee instead of sugar. Not to mention that you tampered with the security camera in Mr. Hernandez's classroom. James, this is the third time this year that you have been sent here to my office for disruption to Mr. Hernandez's classes. If this disruptive behavior continues, then I'll have to see that you are suspended. Well if I could go out for sports, I'd not be such a disruptive influence in class. James. Your mother has made it quite clear why we should not allow you out for sports. You have proven yourself to be quite competitive and your mother, myself and the board of school governors are quite frankly worried that your competitive mind will negatively affect the other students in the school. So that is why it is my job as principal of this school to say that you are denied from competing in sports. This isn't fair. If I was let out for sports, I'd be less of a disruption. I've worked my whole life to improve my speed and you don't care. I'll only be the best by a tiny bit. I don't care that I have a competitive advantage over the class. This is so unfair. James Porter, I will not have that display of rage in my office. My decision is final. Your mother and I have made it quite clear that you are denied from competing in sports. And I will not accept no as an answer. I have made myself quite clear. You will not be competing in sports. Do I make myself clear? Yes, Principal Baxter. Good. Now get out of my office. James, this is the third time this year that you have been sent to the office. Don't you think it's time you stop being a disruptive influence? It's not my fault. Mr. Hernandez just hates me. I'm sure that deep down he sees you as a gifted student. Anyway, the news is on. Breaking news. The 
This urban superhero program has officially been deemed a success. The program, first initiated 15 years ago in the wake of the Plotropolis Clock Tower disaster, has been deemed a success in a recent press conference conducted by the Plotropolis press officer Ryan Perkins. We now cross over to the Plotropolis press office's main press room to hear the outcome of the program. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed members of the Plotropolis press office, I am here today to announce that the Suburban Superhero program has officially been declared a success. The program, first initiated by the Plotropolis press office 15 years ago, has today been deemed a success due to the significant decline in disasters caused by so-called superheroes. It gives me great pride and pleasure to announce that, since the program was initiated 15 years ago, there has been a significant decline in the number of disasters caused by suspected superheroes. The number of disasters since the initiation of the program 15 years ago have declined by 365 percent. Therefore, the whole initiative of superheroes' secret identities being their only identities has been extremely successful over the last 15 years, and as the head of the Plotropolis press office, I am delighted that the program has been received in this way. The program will change the world and make citizens more aware of the dangers of superheroes, allowing them to live quiet lives without fear of being put at risk. I understand that the program is prejudiced against the superhero community, but our intentions were to protect not only the government and the general public, but to protect the superheroes themselves from prejudice against them. The Suburban Superhero Program is working so well in fact, that the United States of Plotagon has become a major superpower in itself, meaning that the President has declared that superheroes are no longer required to protect the states, and have been declared illegal by the Senate and the Secret Service. Any superheroes that are still in their community, going against the aim of the Suburban Superhero Program, will be detained and arrested by state police officers. I am not going to say any more. I will not answer any questions that the members of the public have asked. The Suburban Superhero Program is a success, and that is all that matters.